When I met Sonia, she was a quiet girl, but she always wanted to learn. She is short and wears glasses, but is really good at basketball. Her mother did not complete her education, but saw it was important for Sonia. She had spent all her life in the city, so when she started volunteering in rural life, she was shocked to see the disparity between genders. When girls are on their menstrual period, they are treated as untouchable and miss their classes. Parents are more concerned about the education of their boys than girls, and the girl child is forced into child marriage. Sonia did not get intimidated by the size of this challenge. She just got to work in the only way to make deep lasting change. She started by leading classes in school on sexual health and sexual rights for girls and boys, and then worked with them to get the teachers and parents involved. She did her own research to expose the huge divide between girls and boys education. And she made sure that everybody, including the national government, knew that promises and laws were not being fulfilled. Sonia's girls and boys now started delivering chains themselves as they started to change the minds of parents and teachers. The community was better informed and it changed from making girls untouchable to providing better menstrual hygiene. Then the earthquake struck. Young people responded within hours. Before the aftershocks had even stopped, Sonia and her peers helped make sure there were safe spaces for education and her classes to continue. These spaces turned into centers run by young people so their communities could lead their own recovery, gather vital information on disease and child trafficking and influence how they were involved in the national recovery. They are determined not just to rebuild, but to lead the new development of a Nepal that is stronger than ever. She started influencing world leaders, as well as her own politicians, and was invited to London to tell them what they needed to do. She said, to me, education is life. So I was sitting there listening to Sonia, and it reminded me of all the inspiring young people I'd met across the world. People like Alaro, who I met in the slums of Nairobi last year. As you can imagine, it's really difficult to earn a living there. But he's always had this passion that's kept him going, and that's his passion for fashion. Nairobi has a fashion industry. Uh, maybe it's sometimes it's too heavily influenced by the big Western brands, or seen as something that's for the rich people in the centre. But he had a vision that was bigger than that. He wanted to celebrate his local community's culture instead. This was really difficult to do. He didn't have the resources available to him at first. It's not just about money, but it's about access to equipment like cameras and, and finding the other people in his area to work with. But this is where Power254, a youth organisation in Nairobi, came in. They set up a space in his local community that he could use. In that space, he was able to collaborate. He got really excited by the potential of working with others. They started to design and make the clothes and he recruited models from his local area. Those models he then was able to take photos of and they were uploading these pictures to Instagram and other social platforms and starting to get sales from the clothes that he was making. This was a huge success. People started recognising the, the clothing and wanting to buy it, so he was selling it online. But also people started to spot the models that he was working with. And this eventually led to Alaro to set up his own modelling agency where he recruits and trains people from his local slum areas to get into the Nairobi fashion circuit. Now he's looking to a future of further expansion and further exposure for his local community's culture, as well as being able to create employment for other people from the area that he's from. Now, hundreds of youth organisations just like Power254, who helped Alaro, are joining the Youth Power Campaign, which all started off with one young girl in Tanzania called Eva. Let me tell you something. When I was working with my young Tanzanian volunteers, I came across the story of a 16 years old girl who lives in a rural village called Marinzanga. Her name is Eva. Eva's dad works really hard for not much money so that Eva and her five siblings can get education and fulfill their dreams. And this Eva 
did not want her classmate to have to choose between getting clean water or being able to go to school. But when they all wrote a letter to the government for help, they did not get an answer. But my volunteers helped Eva learn that all government made promises to the world on clean water and many other issues, and that she had the right to speak up about these promises. Now guess what Eva did? She wrote a letter to the President of the United States to ask how leaders would actually help young people when they ask for these promises to be kept. At the United Nations, he told Eva, We see you. We hear you. I've read your letter. But I'm telling you, this girl Eva is something else. She did not just wait for his word to become reality. She started her own petition and a campaign which young people around the world could join to make sure promises by their leaders were kept too. This Eva's petition got hundreds and then thousands and then many thousands of signatures. She and her classmate have taken the petition to the capital city to meet her government and prime minister. Can you imagine? Now she hopes to get clean water soon, but her campaign is now bigger. She has inspired young people in Tanzania and young people all over the world who she tells, I am just one girl. So I've seen what happens I have seen when, what happens seen what when happens you only allow the power of young people to change the world. Their time to lead is now. Join us.